Aside from having heard and sung along to the Billy Joel classic, seen The Sound of Music a billion and one times, and discussed the city's existence briefly in some history classes, Vienna still remained somewhat of a mystery to me. Although my grandmother is Austrian, I didn't know much at all about Austria prior to visiting it. Therefore, passing through this magnificent city was very exciting for me. We went to the most beautiful art museum, ate some incredible meals, thrifted, and explored parks and markets during our three-day stay. So, without further ado, welcome to my Vienna Chronicles. Pippa's bed, me, Christina, Bree. It's such a cute hostel. You said we're always <laughs> doing a good job with this little boy. It's, it, no, it's fine. Are we going to the market? As soon as we got off the train and lugged our suitcases through the pebble hills and streets of Vienna all the way to our hostel, we headed out to Nash Market, making sure to curl our lashes on the way out. <laughs> Classic. We were overwhelmed by the abundance of spices and fresh produce here. I will never not be amazed by markets, how the different fruits and vegetables come together in such a beautiful array of colors, the endless meal possibilities they present, and the beauty and the simplicity of it all. We ended up with falafels, apples, and strawberries as a midday snack. <laughs> Vancouver. Toronto. Toronto. Oh, paparazzi. Yeah. Let's make to the main street to do some shopping, stopping inside Vintage Fabric first. This curated thrift store had so many cute lingerie tops and tanks, as well as an endless supply of Levi's jeans and plaid skirts. Melody and Bianca joined us here after their brutal travel day and indulged in some retail therapy as well. <laughs> I tried on this jean skirt I liked, but it was a bit too tight, so I left them behind. But Brie got this plaid mini skirt I'm a big fan of. The thrifting in Vienna was remarkably better than in Prague. <laughs> Show us what you got, Christina. It's very favorite. Argyle. I know, I classic tea. Can you tell me she's <laughs> <water> <laughs> And then. <laughs> dinner, we went to Bao Bar, this Bao spot with a modern industrial looking interior and a small menu. We waited for our food on the swing set right outside the restaurant and across from our dining area. I had the tofu bao and sweet potato fries and everything was incredible. <laughs> The bread is so fluffy. Things like I won't eat them separately. Ten out of ten. They never have a vegetarian option at like places I would go. Really? Which is why I've never had it. That is so good. Mm. Ready, set, go. After that rapid walk race, we made our way to Ice Chrysler for some ice cream. This spot had the funkiest and most uncommon flavors, such as goat cheese, black currant, poppy seed, and pumpkin. And the vendor was super friendly. The green one is pumpkin. I kind of want to try the green one. What'd you get? Raspberry cookies and cream. Thoughts? Fruity. Fire yeah. Did you get the goat cheese the one? The 
laundry day. All my underwear is just hanging in this random locker. I hope no one like comes and cleans it. My underwear bags look really bad in this Mine look worse. It's not really doing me any favors right now. I'm giving a witch today. And we're going to Eric, this brunch place that Brie found. And we have a smoothie. I need fruit. We got tickets. Ouch. Is it Belvedere? Belvedere for the upper one. Because I think that's like the art museum. I didn't choose the upper lower. Oh, Brie. I just bought a ticket. <laughs> matchy, matchy. Our Prague necklaces. Also, it's my first time in Austria. My family's from Austria. My heritage. I'm very excited to explore more and to send pictures to my grandmother. She can be so happy. Don't take that. I like that. We woke up the next day to a dark room. Little to no sun rays were peeking through the clouds on this day. The overcast sky did not bring down our spirits, however. On the contrary, as we walked through the city to go to brunch, the empty streets and cool air helped wake me from my morning slump. <laughs> such a good brunch spot. The interior resembled a gold cave and was illuminated by a small window and yellow tinted lamps. The cool layout and low ceilings gave it a very intimate feel. <laughs> got a bowl with an egg, avocado, lettuce, a roasted tomato, and mushrooms, which was the perfect breakfast. I'm never that hungry in the morning, and this was super light. Melody got a green shakshuka. I finished hers and Bianca's, and it was insane. Perfect balance of savory, sweet, and spicy. Would recommend getting that for sure. Everyone else got breakfast bowls and eggs benedict, which looked fabulous. We had all been craving a good brunch after the amazing breakfast we had in Prague, and this stepped up to the plate. <laughs> Breakfast was amazing. On our way to the Belvedere Museum, we walked by this beautiful building we had to check out up close. It was another museum and it looked like a castle. It always stuns me to think that all government and cultural buildings look like this in Europe. Meanwhile, we're surrounded by cement blocks and glass sky rises. Breakfast was amazing. It was such a cute area, such a cute place. 10 on 10. caught in the rain as we continued our trek over which is always bittersweet i love the rain and there's this romantic quality to being surprised by a downpour but getting my hair and clothes wet is so unpleasant therein lies the beauty of life i guess you take the good with the ugly and make the best out of it
Belvedere Museum, we started out on the ground floor with some medieval art before later heading up to more contemporary sections. Medieval painted humans scare me so much with their googly eyes. I always find it very entertaining to look at them, but it freaks me out. You like it? This white room with fresques all over the walls and ceilings was the highlight for me. Entering this room was breathtaking. It felt like entering a different era. This would be my journal writing room if I was a princess in the 18th century. given you my museum spiel so many times, so I won't get into how much I love a good museum day, but I will say this was my favorite museum we visited during our girls trip. The building was a museum in itself, with paintings going beyond the pretty frames to adorn the walls and ceilings all throughout. No matter where you looked, you would catch sight of something mesmerizing. Chandeliers, fresques, sculptures, and masterpieces you read about but only rarely get to see up close. modern exhibition as well, which showcased sculptures with floating heads, an embodiment of what I wish I could do when my thoughts are driving me nuts. There's something truly special about seeing this type of contemporary, unconventional work displayed inside such a traditional and numinous setting. It almost gives the sculptures more meaning by contrasting them with works that were made in a time where human mental torment was meant to be concealed and those who struggled were stigmatized and chastised. We also got to see a lot of Klimt's work, naturally. He's one of my favorite artists alongside Monet. They have very different styles, but both their works embody the lively beauty of the mundane and use pretty colors to do so. I've always been drawn to colorful art. I like bright works that capture and romanticize the ordinary. I enjoyed his unfinished piece the most, entitled The Bride. He never got to complete it because he died in the process of painting it. The colors are what initially drew me in, but the curved shapes of the bodies meshing into each other and the heads leaning on one another is what endeared me the most. He captures love and affection in such a pretty way. Short and sweet. Yeah, short and sweet. And I really liked the descriptions on the wall. It explained stuff, yeah. like kind of gave it a story. Very easy to read and like engaging. I took art history and I, it just felt like I was like relearning it all. Did you learn about Klimt and stuff? Not Klimt, but Corbet and Gauguin. The museum's architecture was oh insane. The ceilings and like the crown molding was insane. I felt like so insignificant. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Literally the sublime.
ourselves an appetite walking around the museum and therefore headed to Cafe Central for some coffee and apple strudel. I got a pint of chocolate because I don't like fruit pastries at all. And I think everyone agreed that would have been the move regardless. The strudel was very underwhelming. Even the girls who enjoy fruit pastries only liked the first few bites and I suspect it's only because they were hungry. <laughs> Pippa. I don't love the raisins. Eight. Good. I don't think the raisins at all. What's your rating? I'm going to go with Pippa. I give it a nine. An eight. Pretty good. Nine. Nine. Oh. Do I taste like alcohol? I've left. 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 I need something salty. That sweetness is like lingering. Yeah. Just got what's it called? Um, apple, apple strudel. I didn't get that. I got it. Mm -hmm. And it was was it a hit? It was okay. It, it was way too like big. Yeah, then it was like yeah, six. Yeah. It it, was, I mean, I tasted a bite of Melodies and saw my favorite. <laughs> but it smelled yeah. good when it first came out. It's I think the type me. of thing that we just had to try because we're in Vienna and it's like yeah, from and, it's here. and tomorrow we're gonna try famous chocolate cake too. And we're getting schnitzel tomorrow. <laughs> Going to dinner. We went to Nenny for dinner. Situated in the Nash Market, this spot was recommended to us so many times and for good reason. We enjoyed drinks in their outside seating area. an insane amount of food. We tried sesame eggplant and rice dishes, salads, ground meat and hummus plates, so many fries and falafels. I got a plate of hummus, eggs, fried eggplant, roasted tomato and pita. The ingredients were really fresh. It was so good, but the portions were huge and none of us were able to finish anything. We concluded we definitely should have taken things to share. to Cafe Satcher for breakfast. What better way to start the day than with a rich Viennese chocolate cake? They have the cake, guys. Are you okay, Pippa? I'm worried that they don't have the chocolate cake. We want to see the chocolate cake with a side of the potato. <laughs> I couldn't stomach anything this morning because of our previous meal, so I only had a taste and it was okay, but I can't say I saw the hype. Over me, gonna make them jealous, everybody. Oh, Brie was telling us about how two baking companies went to court for almost a decade to battle over the recipe and determine the actual original one. Fighting for nine years over this cake, I will never understand, but to each their own. It didn't have a rich chocolate flavor as I expected it would, but it was tasty and that it was sweet, well balanced, and pretty simple. It's for this cute cafe called. Oh, maybe we'll get hot chocolate. And then we're gonna go hang out at the garden. This is from Last Shop. On Instagram, I won it in a giveaway. And then Pippa found this famous schnitzel place we're gonna try. And yeah, I feel kind of weird talking to the camera. Okay, goodbye. Afterwards, we went to Palmen House for some fresh juice, but mostly for the vibes. It was like eating in a botanical garden. The natural lighting and grand nature of it was so enjoyable. The vines growing on the glass were so cool too. The orange juice was fresh pressed and as good as fresh pressed juice can be. Pulpy too, which I love. Bree's carrot juice tasted like baby carrots and although she didn't love it, I found it nice because it was sweet. Got orange juice, carrot juice at the Palman house. So pretty.
juiced up. We went to tan in the park for a bit. The sun was out and I just laid there eavesdropping on conversations I could not understand. We're already leaving. Wait, can you take as I mentioned, my grandmother is Austrian. Her mother came to the US as a child to join her father who had emigrated in the hopes of creating a better life for his family as America was believed to be paved with gold. Although they didn't come from Vienna or anywhere that close to it, I've always had a curiosity to visit the country my gram speaks the language of. After having my mom and uncles, she went back to school to learn German to tap into her heritage and her deep curiosity for languages and different cultures was passed on to me. That's on Vienna. It's interesting. I don't really know if we were able to put a name to the vibe. We were talking about how everywhere else we've been, there's been a very like tangible vibe. And here, it's really hard to pick up on. Except that this park is giving good vibes. Yes. I don't really know how I to think explain they're really it. Nice. It's not like Prague. So. Prague is so like Prague. Oh, wait, they're loving this park. We went to Figelmuller to try schnitzel. This was my first time trying it. I got the vegan one, which honestly just tasted like chicken nuggets to me. It was good, but needed a lot of lemon and salt to overcome the blandness. I think I was a harsher critic than usual on this day just because my stomach was unwell, but I'm happy to have tried it. On our way home, we walked by this beautiful church and stopped by a post office so that Pippa could send a card to her parents. Cards and a birthday card for Bella and we are back at the park because it's so nice after a day of heavier meals We stopped to grab smoothie bowls at superfood deli near our hostel I have some picky tendencies when it comes to food and fruit is my biggest struggle I can't eat fruit if it's been cut and has touched other fruit a fruit salad is quite literally my worst nightmare and smoothies that I don't make myself or see someone make are a no-no Oh my god, Pippa, don't do that on the camera. I don't even know what we're talking about. Afterwards, we walked some more and Pippa kept saying she wanted pizza, so we ended up trying Pizza Bros. This was such a cute pizza spot. You could tell the cook was into his craft as he kept dancing as he topped the pizzas. It was really entertaining to watch. The girls got the pepperoni pizza and it looked incredible. Next year of Chronicles is Munich, which we absolutely loved, so stay tuned.